This rabbi is a proud member of the Israel lobby. As a relatively new rabbi, I gave a Yom Kippur sermon about religiously and spiritually connecting to Israel. I spoke about walking the Bible. According to tradition, the rock on the Temple Mount called the Evan Shtia is the foundation stone where God began to create the world. So looking at the Temple Mount, we think of creation as well. I spoke about Sipori, Sepphoris, and the Galilee, where people now dress up as the rabbis of the Mishnah and teach us how the Mishnah came about. I encourage people to walk about where the dunes and swamps used to be that were drained and cleared by the Chavutzim, the, the pioneers, to build the land of Israel. I boasted about going to Israel as a unique and most holy religious experience. All of that was and is true. But I stopped my sermon there out of fear. I was afraid of the P word, politics. I didn't want to say anything about Israel's political leadership, about Israel's policies, or even America's policies toward Israel. Lest someone disagree with me and accuse me of being unrabbinic. I have thankfully matured since that sermon. And I believe that I know how to properly address the politics of, of Israel as a rabbi of a diverse congregation. This political maturation came to mind during last week's funding of the Iron Dome, Dome incident and a retracted statement from the New York Times about the Israel lobby and so-called influential rabbis affecting the vote. The incident poked me like a bear and got me appropriately defensive about the American rabbinical community's role in supporting Israel and yes, being involved in political lobbying. In summary of the incident, during the first days of Sukkot, the Democratic caucus was preparing for the possibility of a government shutdown, which didn't come about thankfully, and even a debt default in Congress, which could still happen. And so they needed to put in the annual funding of the Iron Dome in a continuing resolution. It included a $1 billion increase because we know that during the Gaza conflict this last year, more and more Iron Dome missiles were used to protect Israel. Out of the 535 lawmakers in the Senate and the House, a couple of dozen of representatives balked saying that the expense favored Israel over the Palestinians. Included among the initially this small group was Jamal Bowman, a former school principal who won the primary against Elliot Engel. And Bowman's district includes Riverdale and New Rochelle. And many Jews helped him in his campaign. And of course, Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez, who represents parts of Queens and the Bronx, was also part of this group. The continuing resolution actually failed as part of the politics funding the government. So the Iron Dome was put to a vote the next day as a separate bill. It passed virtually unanimously amongst the 535 senators and representatives. Bowman voted yes. AOC famously abstained and then began to cry over her abstention. AOC is part of the so-called squad of liberal representatives, including Ilan Omar of Minnesota. She is a Somali Muslim who says that she supports the Palestinian cause. Her so-called support, and I call it that in my opinion, involves the outright vilification of the state of Israel without acknowledging any complicated nuance of the last 50 years of the Arab-Israeli conflict. To add to the flames, the New York Times reported that AOC's abstention was the result of the powerful Israeli lobby and the influential rabbis who vote Democratic. The Times retracted the rabbi comment, but kept the lobby piece. The Times is not wrong, even if its tone is horrible and liable to lead to anti-Semitism. K Street and the lobbying get is a bad rap because of the amount of money involved and how sometimes it looks like bribery. 
I won't be so rash to say that the Israeli rabbi, that lobby is without money, but I will say that the Israeli lobby is also very much focused on the true act of lobbying, working with all elected leaders to see that the majority of Americans support Israel and that to show that supporting Israel is critical to America's security interests. Because the Israel lobby has facts on its side, it's been successful. And why are rabbis involved? Because the Israel that the Jewish people need, the one that I said go and have a spiritual experience, is a political entity. It's Midinat Yisrael, the state of Israel, born and recognized by the United Nations. If a rabbi wants Jews to find safety, to move to Israel if desired, and to most certainly to visit for a safe and secure Israel, then we need to lobby politically for Israel. Let's celebrate that amidst so much partisan rancor that's going on in Congress, that it unified almost unanimously around Israel. If we have to use labels, I think it's pretty much known that I sometimes lean politically to the left. I would love to be in an ideal world where Palestinians have equal opportunity to thrive and succeed. Yet too many times in history, the Palestinian leaders have never wasted an opportunity to waste an opportunity. To quote, I think, Golden Meir's Yichron Ali Bracha. The Netanyahu administration has passed. The Israel lobby worked with him. And for now, let's leave the debate about the past alone. Let's focus on the present, the one that the squad tried to squander. Prime Minister Bennett's government has Arabs in its cabinet, and there is a fury of work being done to markedly improve the lives of Palestinians in Israel and the West Bank. Bennett seems committed to building the facts on the ground for a Palestinian state. That would certainly be in America's interest in my mind. And yet a tiny minority doesn't see this fact. They rather keep vilifying Israel. Last week's Iron Dome incident should be a wake up call to never take support for Israel for granted. Let us pledge to continue this most important relationship building with elected officials from any party. It would not hurt after Shabbat to write to Congress member Swazi to Senator Schumer's and Gillibrand, thanking them for their support. Every time we write to them, they know that we are lobbying for Israel. So to conclude, I am a rabbi who is proud to lobby the elected leaders of all parties on how a strong relationship with Israel is good for America, good for Israel, and good for the spirituality of the Jewish community. Shabbat Shalom.